More than 11 million tons of plastic flow into the oceans every year, the equivalent of a garbage truck full of plastic being dumped away every single minute. Few people realize that a plastic bottle you drink from years in the environment. But there is also good news. Despite that grim picture, plastic is not completely useless after a single use. While it cannot be recycled endlessly, like glass, most common plastics can still be collected, cleaned, and reborn into new products, from clothing and household goods to packaging that re-enters the consumer cycle. So how exactly does that process take place? Join the factor in as we step inside one of the world's most advanced plastic recycling plants and witness firsthand the journey of rebirth for a material that is at once essential and hotly debated across the globe. But the story of plastic's rebirth doesn't stop at turning it into bottles or household items. In some countries, people are also finding the ways to transform plastic waste into a source of energy, and Singapore is a prime example. Here, discarded plastic is rarely recycled into new products. Instead, most of it is sent to massive waste-to-energy plants. Inside these facilities, plastic, along with other municipal waste, is burned in giant furnaces at extremely high temperatures. This process reduces the volume of waste by up to 90% while at the same time generating steam to drive turbines and produce electricity for the national grid. For a small nation with limited land, this technology is seen as an optimal solution, addressing waste management while also creating additional energy. The waste-to-energy model is already widely adopted in Europe and Japan, but it has yet to spread globally. In the United States, high investment costs and relatively cheap energy have kept WTE from becoming a mainstream option. Yet with the mounting pressure of plastic pollution and climate change, do you think our country should embrace this model? The journey of plastic recycling begins the moment empty bottles are discarded after fulfilling their initial purpose. From crowded supermarkets, schools and offices to small residential neighborhoods, millions of plastic bottles are collected every day in recycling bins placed everywhere. But not every place operates the same way. In the United States, only 10 states such as California, Oregon, and Michigan apply a deposit return system, which means consumers pay a small deposit when buying a bottle. Thanks to this, the recovery rate in these states is double the national average, turning used bottles into assets with immediate cash value the moment a consumer finishes drinking. Teams of workers and specialized trucks move throughout the city gathering sacks filled with bottles and compressing them into massive containers. Each truck can carry tens of thousands of bottles, equal to about 20 tons of plastic in a single trip. When they arrive at the transfer station, the entire load of bottles is unloaded by conveyor belts or tipping mechanisms. In just a few minutes, dozens of tons of bottles cascade onto the yard, forming giant mountains of plastic that glisten under the sunlight in a mix of colors green, blue, clear, and other pale shades. These massive piles of raw material are then fed into the processing line, where modern technology transforms them from waste into clean material ready for rebirth. To turn the chaotic piles of collected bottles into a uniform stream of material, the next step is preliminary sorting, where technology and human effort work hand in hand. Few people realize that there are as many as seven main types of plastic on the market, each marked with a recycling code. But in practice, only PET and HDEPE are the two most common types that are regularly reborn into new products. For this reason, the entire sorting process focuses on retaining as much of these two plastics as possible while eliminating everything else. From the very beginning, the plastic waste is poured into a massive rotating steel drum. Its surface is covered with rows of pre-cut holes. As tons of bottles and packaging tumble across, dust, sand, and tiny fragments sift down through the openings, while larger bottles continue rolling toward the end of the drum. In this way, the material stream is separated by size, laying the groundwork for more refined filtering steps. 
From there, a conveyor belt carries the plastics through the manual sorting area, where workers stationed on both sides quickly remove intruding items like metal cans, plastic bags, or cardboard. At the same time, automated cutters spin to strip off caps and labels, usually made from different types of plastic. Magnetic sensors constantly eject bits of steel, pins, or stray can lids. After this layer of mechanical and manual screening, the material flow becomes far more uniform, made up mostly of PE to bottle bodies, cleaner, purer, and ready to move forward into the next stage of its rebirth. The rigid bottle bodies, once sorted, move into the grinding chamber. Inside, hundreds of alloy steel blades spin at extremely high speeds, producing a sharp, piercing sound that echoes throughout the plant glittering under the light. The enormous capacity of these machines is truly astonishing. Every hour they can process up to 3,000 pounds of plastic. What once looked like endless mountains of bottles can be reduced to neat fragments in just a matter of minutes. The grinding process doesn't just reduce size, it also creates a crucial advantage for the next stages. Once the plastic is broken down this small, it melts much faster in the extrusion furnace, saving up to 40% of the energy compared to melting whole pieces. As a result, the entire production line not only accelerates processing speed, but also significantly reduces operating costs, laying the groundwork for the high-tech sorting phase that follows. From those tiny fragments, optical technology and artificial intelligence take over handling the most delicate sorting step in the entire process. Arrays of high-speed cameras scan each flake, analyzing its color and surface structure within milliseconds. If the system detects a piece of clear PET, green PET, white HDPE, or even an outsider like wood, ceramic, or glass, a powerful jet of compressed air instantly fires, knocking it out of the main stream. The precision is astonishing. Each jet of air targets a single piece of plastic weighing less than one thousandth of an ounce, without disturbing the surrounding fragments. On average, a single optical sorter can process over 10,000 fragments per second with more than 95% accuracy, equivalent to the output of hundreds of workers laboring nonstop. Every second, tens of thousands of particles are separated with almost unbelievable accuracy. The result is a purified flow of material divided into uniform groups ready for the next stage. From a chaotic beginning, the fragments are now pure enough to enter the pelletizing stage. Once sorted, the flakes are fed into the extrusion system, where temperatures rise. Under this intense heat, each fragment melts and fuses into a dense stream of plastic. Inside the machine, a massive screw rotates, both mixing and pushing the molten plastic forward. Along the screw's length, pressure gradually increases, forcing the stream ahead. When the plastic reaches the desired viscosity, it pushes through ultra-fine metal screens that capture the last remaining impurities. At this point, the molten plastic is cut into countless tiny pellets. A water cooling process immediately solidifies their shape, making them uniform in size with smooth surfaces that shine like man-made gems. Millions of these pellets exit the machine, dry and compact, becoming the standard feedstock for manufacturing new plastic products. From uniform PET pellets, the manufacturing journey moves into a clearly defined stage, creating the preform, the foundation from which the final shape will emerge. Inside the factory, the material, after passing quality inspection, is fed into the heating system. The temperature rises to about 480 degrees, softening the plastic and preparing it to pass through the mold. The result is short, test tube-like pieces known as preforms. Each preform has a thick body with the neck already molded with threads for the cap. They are engineered to withstand both heat and mechanical stress, ensuring they remain stable during transport and further processing. But the advantages of preforms go beyond technical performance. Their compact size helps optimize storage and logistics, making it possible to ship millions of units without taking up excessive space. For this reason, many facilities specialize solely in producing preforms, 
then supplying them to beverage companies, where they are blown into finished bottles near the point of consumption. When the preforms are ready, they enter a decisive stage, blow molding, where they take on the true shape of a bottle. The preform is placed into a heating system, warmed just enough to make the plastic pliable while still maintaining structural stability. Immediately after, high pressure caressed air is injected through the neck, causing the plastic walls to expand evenly and press tightly against the surface of a metal mold crafted to the desired shape. A 1.5 liter preform, only about four to five inches long, can stretch to four or five times its original height after blow molding. This technique is considered one of the most precise and highly automated steps in pet bottle production. Each system can manufacture thousands of bottles within seconds, with deviations kept to an absolute minimum. Wall thickness, thread accuracy, concentricity, and surface gloss are constantly monitored by sensors and computer software. The result is a bottle that is lightweight yet strong enough to hold carbonated beverages, resistant to leakage, and able to maintain its shape under pressure. Beyond technical standards, this process also allows remarkable flexibility, capacity, body curves, label placement, or even embossed logos can all be tailored to brand requirements. This is the step that transforms a plastic preform into a finished pet bottle, ready to move on to cooling and packaging. Immediately after leaving the blow mold, the surface of the bottle is still extremely hot, leaving the plastic walls soft and prone to deformation if not treated right away. For this reason, production lines move the bottles into an instant cooling system using streams of cold air or circulating water to stabilize the structure. This rapid cooling ensures the material hardens quickly and preserves the original shape. What's remarkable is that in modern factories, the cooling rate is calibrated with extreme precision. A freshly molded a PET bottle can reach a safe temperature in less than five seconds. In addition, many systems recover the heat released from the bottles to warm water or air, saving energy and lowering operating costs. Once the plastic has fully solidified, the bottle gains the mechanical strength required to be stacked, labeled, and withstand impacts during transportation. The cooling time is carefully balanced so it never slows down the production line, while still maintaining the clarity and rigidity of the material. Once the bottle's body has fully stabilized, the journey continues with a rigorous screening stage to ensure quality before reaching consumers. The inspection line is equipped with sensors, cameras, and precise measuring devices. Each product is scanned to detect cracks, air bubbles, or dimensional deviations. Random samples are also taken for mechanical testing, tensile, compression, and impact to ensure durability. For bottles intended for food and beverages, laboratories perform chemical analyses to guarantee no harmful substances remain. Only after passing a series of rigorous tests can the product move forward. Approved items are collected into large batches, stacked onto pallets, and wrapped in protective film. Robotic palletizers neatly and accurately arrange thousands of bottles, containers, or plastic items. Every batch is labeled with a traceability code, ensuring full transparency from recycled raw material to finished product. From the central warehouse, trucks and shipping containers deliver the goods to supermarkets, beverage plants, or retail stores. The journey concludes here, yet it also begins a new cycle, turning waste into a resource and old bottles into new ones. In the United States, the reality of plastic recycling hides far more shadows than the labels suggest. Only about 5% of plastic bottles are actually recycled while the vast majority end up buried in massive landfills or sent to incinerators, adding further strain on the environment. For many years, the U.S., along with other developed nations, relied on exporting millions of tons of plastic waste to Asia, with common destinations including China, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. But in 2018, when China issued its ban on plastic waste imports, that door abruptly closed, forcing the U.S. to confront its own towering piles of waste. Even so, part of this plastic continues to be shipped to other developing countries, 
where limited treatment capacity means much of it is discharged directly into rivers and oceans, fueling yet another wave of global pollution. From the moment it is discarded to the moment it returns in a new form, the journey of a plastic bottle reveals the power of technology and the cycle of production. Each stage from collection, sorting, shredding, and refining, to extrusion into pellets, molding preforms, and blow shaping, is proof that something once considered waste can be transformed into a valuable resource. The final product is not just the familiar water bottle, but also a reminder that waste can be reborn when handled properly. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe so you won't